first month on pond five first month doing stock footage ever in my entire life this was my first experience doing this i'm about to spill the beans right here in this first month on pond five i probably put in close to 300 hours of work i'm talking about day and night 12 hour days you wake up you go to the bathroom you get to the computer you start you know keywording metadata then you run out in the field you start shooting that's what it was like for all of april day and night we lived and breathed pond five it was just stock footage all day every day all month april 2020 so this is what it looked like put in roughly 300 hours of work in the end we had about 1300 clips and in total we made 468 dollars the month of april 2020 so if you want to hear about how I did it, what it was like, the kinds of clips that were selling, the kind of clips that were not selling, just the whole experience, this is where it's all going down. So keep watching. So my name is Mike. I'm a commercial media producer in Bayonne, New Jersey. I make a living doing what I love. I shoot videos, I shoot photos, and it pays my bills. And this is what I do full time. This is what it's all about. So recently, as you know, the coronavirus pandemic happened and me as a self-employed kind of freelance gig to, gig to gig person, I lost all my jobs. I had projects lined up, everything got delayed, put on hold, had to issue refunds, had stuff just boom, 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 canceled out. So initially I got screwed, I lost a lot of money, and I was thinking like, what am I gonna do? Like, like you can't go outside, you know, everything's locked down. All my business clients, they're all struggling, they're all hit with this thing. So we're all kind of in the same thing together. So I started watching YouTube videos and I found, uh, I think it's Jevin, Jevin Dovey and Chris Howe. I watched you know videos of how to make additional money as a stock uh, footage and stock photography, how to make more money doing this kind of stuff. I watched their videos and it really gave me a lot of ideas because I've been in the business since 2016 and I've always been aware of stock footage, stock photos, but to me, I had a lot of misconceptions and stuff I didn't get about it. They really clarified it and they explained that you don't need to have like super commercial studio quality or cliche, you know, goofy, you know, corporate videos. It could be like real world stuff, you know, like real clips, you know, it could really be anything you want to be. So I said, hey, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot. Initially, I didn't start with Pond5. I tried using Shutterstock and I didn't really know like what am I gonna upload? I have so much footage. I probably have like thousands and thousands of clips over the last couple of years and it's like, where do I you know, start? So I thought to myself, you know, the coronavirus is happening. Let's shoot some footage of like face masks with toilet paper and you know, some silly stuff like that. This is when it started. So I wasn't really taking it too serious. So the clips came out kind of goofy. I'll you know, link it over here. Silly clips like this. And I uploaded them to Shutterstock. And a week later, I was waiting for this thing to finally get approved, but it all got rejected. And it got rejected because they said, you know, there was artifacts and green and all this kind of stuff nobody could even notice. So that was the end of Shutterstock. In the meantime, I had also applied for Black Box Guild and the membership application was still pending. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give Pond5 a try. So I signed up on their page. You gotta just upload your driver's license. I got approved within three days. And then I took those same silly, you know, coronavirus clips and I put them on Pond5 and they got approved within a week. So that's when I was like, yo, I'm about to, about to give this a shot. So now I had my Corona clips up there and I thought, hey, I got to get some more stuff up here. So I started looking at all my projects over the last couple of years and I wasn't sure like which is where should I start you know like which ones have permissions which ones don't so just for safety I picked out one of my own personal projects where I was testing out a new gimbal and we were in the park with my wife she's riding her bicycle I'm just tracking her and the shots look pretty good so I was like hey let's try it so I stuck those on Pond5 they all got approved and it inspired me even more because now I was like oh my god my clips are being approved somebody could even buy it I was like damn so that night i started binge watching like all the stock footage videos on youtube reading everything on google reading stories articles read about some guy who had fifteen thousand videos and he was making like thousands of dollars a month i was like damn i gotta get in on this that night we ended up watching this movie called nightcrawler with uh i think it was jake jake gyllenhaal the actor you know it's a great great movie check it out nightcrawler 
And it's, you know, it's about a guy, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's about a guy who goes out and shoots like news footage and accident and stuff and he sells the footage. So the next day we went to Times Square and the place was a ghost town. We started just shooting empty streets, closed businesses, people wearing face masks. It was crazy, like not a single person was there. It was like totally desolate. And then out of nowhere, a whole swarm of like hundreds of kids on BMX bikes start just rolling into Times Square. They're doing like crazy wheelies. They're slapping phones out of people's hands. These kids were just going crazy. And the whole time, police officers are trying to tackle these kids off their bikes. They're trying to, you know, catch them. And then I'm over there with my gimbal, just shooting the whole thing. So I got the whole thing on camera, like one solid take of the whole altercation. And the, the gang leader of the whole thing, the cops tackled him. And this dude, you know, he like finessed his way out by two cops and he ran away. And I got it all on camera. So, of course, you know, I posted that, the whole thing on Facebook. Next morning, my mother-in-law gives us a phone call. And she's like, oh my God, your video, it's on the internet. It's got 100,000 views. Oh my God, it's your video. And I was like, wait a minute. I looked at my page, only had like 1,000 views. I look at their page, it's blowing up. I'm like, wait a minute. They had ripped it off my page and reposted it on theirs without my permission. And it, I knew it wasn't right. Like something was off, you know? So I called up my buddy, you know, who knows all this legal stuff. And he was like, yeah, man, that's copyright infringement. He referred me to this lawyer. I spoke to this copyright lawyer. And she was like, yeah, that's not good. Like they got to pay you for that. So I emailed the company and I was like, yo guys, like I'm the original creator. I made this video. I didn't authorize you to post it. And you know, how are you going to make this right? So they called me ASAP, they apologized, like they were super apologetic, and they said they got it from somebody else, they claimed it was theirs, they, they were super sorry, and it ended up turning into a little payout for me. So that could be a whole other episode on working with news companies and selling them footage. That was a nice little, little mini venture. And then after that experience, that's when I was like, damn, like media is worth a lot of money. Like these big production companies, news companies, they pay big bucks for this stuff. So... I went and started editing all my Times Square footage. I ended up getting like 150, 200 clips from that session, stuck it all up on Pond5, got approved in like two days. And while I was at it, I was like, you know what? Let's just go all in, let's go exclusive. Cause the other companies, they, they didn't want to work with me. So whatever, I went all in with Pond5 exclusive. And then like two or three days later, like on April 3rd, I got my first sale on Pond5 and I didn't believe it, but my first sale was this clip right here. It's like a four second clip. It's just a basic clip. Just really just, just shooting the street. Nothing special, no fancy movements. Just literally just a steady shot of Times Square. And that clip, I sold it for $79. My commission was like, like nearly $50 commission from Pond5. So I was like, damn, damn. Like if people pay money, $79 for this little four second clip, the potential in all this other footage, I was like, I gotta just, I gotta jump on this so fast. I was super hyped up. I'm like, yo, we gotta just keep making and shooting and editing and pumping footage all day. And that's what we did. We went out into the streets. We started shooting like all the empty buildings, empty streets, coronavirus, face masks, people, closed businesses. And we went to like Manhattan, Brooklyn, Newark, Bayonne, Hoboken, like all over the place just shooting footage of everything we can find. So we got a couple sales shooting these, you know, empty streets, coronavirus, face mask people shots. These were like the straight up editorial shots. Like these were selling. But I was thinking like, you know, the people say the commercial is worth more money. So I was like, you know what? Let's get a model and let's stage a scenario. So I reached out to a friend of mine. She is a yoga fitness instructor. She's super athletic. She looks super good. And I was like, hey, you want to do like a, a business financial crisis scenario down on, you know, Wall Street. And then we can do some fitness stuff in Chinatown. So that's what we did. We went down to Wall Street. She'd wear like her business suit. And she's like freaking out on her iPhone stock market. Here's some of the clips. We did that. Jumped over to Chinatown. It got some cool like quarantine fitness, you know, face mask New Yorker shots. Just a bunch of cool shots in Chinatown. And, you know... Those clips, they haven't sold yet, but I'm banking on them because we put a lot of production value and a lot of time into these clips. So I really, I'm looking at these 
in the long run. So far, it's just been the editorial, but I thought, hey, let's try out the commercial stuff. Then I did another final project where I uh, got a woman who was a professional interior designer. She has a beautiful home. She's like very sophisticated. And we did like a, a working at home during quarantine at her home where she got to be the model and we staged a couple different scenarios like doing conferences on your iPad, you know, conferences on your phone, you know, doing stuff like that, hand sanitizer. So that was a more professional quality video and that was right at the end of April. Those clips still haven't sold yet. I I guess it takes them a while to get into the system. Um, so that that's kind of, I'll show you, like we start, this was our first clip. We started off with these goofy, silly videos and then we kind of transitioned through all of these like editorial street footage. And then we kind of went into these professional commercial model stock footage clips. So over a one month period, we kind of went from this to this. So when it all comes down to all the footage we did in total for the month of April, we did nine projects, which were the ones where we went out in the field. We staged it with models and actors. That was like the professional stuff. Then I mined a total of four projects where one of them was a picnic date uh, I did with my, you know, my wife last year. It was some home cooking videos, like blog videos, and then we did, you know, the bicycle video, and then I did a professional uh, commercial for an Italian restaurant. So one of them was a professional clip. I mined these clips out of my old footage. They still have not sold. So far, the only stuff that has sold has been the coronavirus footage. So yeah, in total, April came out to four hundred and sixty-eight dollars and 45 cents eight total downloads so that's like almost i guess that's two downloads per week a total of 1279 item views and my personal artist page was viewed 848 times so how did i exactly get these sales and these views and all this stuff here is the deeper value so of course right off the bat once you upload it you got to get into the metadata and this is like the most important stuff because this is how your videos will get found by the people. And you don't want to stuff it up with key. I, I start off like that off the bat. You spam it with keywords, but you don't want to do that. There's a lady I watched a course on Skillshare. I'm actually going to link it in the description. I watched her thing. It was super helpful. It was like actually the best hour investment, you know, in the stock footage. Watch her course. Definitely check it out. Where she talks about, not going to spoil it, but I'm going to just say she, she talks about, um, like what's happening, like who, what, when, where, how. So who's in the video, what's happening, where is it, when is it, and how, like how is it shot. So those are some of the things she talks about. Check out her course, it's super good. So I followed her instructions. But then to kind of look at it in the big picture is the people that are looking for your clips, like you'll never know what people are looking for. You can't predict the future. But what you can do is make yourself super discoverable by putting in the correct metadata. So like you want to make it where people could find this exact video, like whatever this video is that you have over here, like people need to type in these keywords and then you need to make sure these keywords are pulling up that video. And just to be sure, read every keyword. And if that keyword doesn't represent that video, delete it. Like it needs to like really show this. The next part of what I did was after I had edited all the clips, I would put together like a little sizzle reel. I'd slap on some music. It would be like a quick little YouTube you know, video. And I would use that just to kind of have it up there for SEO. And I would link it in the description to the Pond5 sales page. And I would send that link to my production friends. I would send it to the news people. Uh, I'd send it on Instagram. I'd send it out on Twitter. So that was like visible everywhere. So I guess these different places could kind of go back to that site. But having a sizzle reel of your stock clips is definitely super important. Uh, make sure you put like a watermark over it. The reason it's super important to have a sizzle reel, because Pond5 is great. Like this is a nice little passive income, but that's not where I made my income this month. Most of it came from the news companies and the production documentary companies. They were the ones that bought these clips. And when you send them this little sizzle reel, now they can quickly just skim through it and see like if you have anything they can use. But when you send somebody like this Pond5 link, you got a million videos in there and it's kind of like, where where do I start? What do I find? The sizzle reel, they know it's it's like, this is the scenario, this is the story, this is what's happening, and then these are the clips. So having the sizzle reels was good. And I guess and the, my biggest takeaway for anyone doing this is 
really try to like you got to just do it and then once you start doing it start being aware of the most repetitive like boring stuff God damn it, go. like me the metadata and publishing videos like when you have to like encode them and publish them off adobe that is the most repetitive tasks you can do so if you can look at it and figure out a way to systemize it and do it super effectively you'll have a much easier time i guess task number one is systems and identifying processes and number two i would say is get used to using the batch edit footage there's an option where you could select clips so like let's say you shot clips in this scenario they're all very similar very similar it's the same location same model everything is a similar batch edit these clips and just you can batch you can just put the same title same you know description all the keywords can be the same batch edit it now it's all automatic publish it and then move on to the next section and then just batch edit these clips you know keyword whatever and just move on like that you could easily bang out like 150 to 200 clips per hour and of course they're all going to be with the same exact title but they're all going to have different keywords related to that set and then once you submit those clips you can always revisit them when you have time and update the titles and you know update the descriptions and add specific keywords but this way they are now in the system they're already online they're already becoming visible to other people because they take even after your clips get updated they still take a couple days to kind of populate into the pond five and number three is just do it and when what i mean by that is just focus on just shooting clips editing them stick them up there don't worry about making them perfect don't worry about writing out the perfect titles and details and all that perfect stuff just get it up there shoot it edit it get it up there and fix it later because you're only going to get better from you know trial and error there's really no you know secret sauce recipe you gotta just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and then by doing it so many times that's when you'll start identifying these different systems these different more effective ways of getting more clips this has been you know a, a tremendous experience for us i'm definitely looking at this in the long term this is the end game goal for me I also want to mine all my footage, all my past projects. I want to just mine all this stuff because I got thousands of clips and I'm sure you do too. And that's probably like where the money comes from is from all these random different projects and different niches. So I really want to do that. But <clears throat> stock footage is definitely, it's been a blessing for us. I'd say it really helped us get through this coronavirus pandemic you know it, it wasn't nothing crazy but it pay, helped us pay our rent helped us pay our bills helped us have a little food on the table and just with like you know the hustle and bustle you gotta just do it you know it shows you that like, anybody can do it like most of it was just us going out there in the field and shooting it and just identifying this trend like this was not i wouldn't say a trend but just being aware of what's happening in the current events and just shooting that and getting it up there and just being quick so you got to just be on the ball. So guys, that has been my experience, my first month with stock footage. And if this helped you any way at all, or you have any questions or you want me to cover any topics, I would like to possibly make a video on my process, the way I shoot, edit, and metalog all this stuff, my super systemized process. If you guys want to know about it, you want me to make a video on it comment below and be sure to like this video and if i get enough likes i'll make the video and otherwise guys this has been uh, it's been a great experience thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time